everybody, it's Ron Seibin, and Microsoft is continuing their assault on Chromebooks by encouraging manufacturers to come up with high-quality, low-cost Windows PCs, and they've been able to convince HP to do that for them. This is the new HP Stream Notebook PC. It retails for $299 on Amazon currently. It's a pretty nicely built computer. It feels a lot like the Chromebooks I've tried from other manufacturers and from HP as well. Just very solid feeling device. Uh, this one actually happens to be fanless as well, so it uh, doesn't make a sound at all because it also has a solid state hard drive on board. So let's take a look at the hardware. We've got a 14 inch 1366 by 768 display. So it's not quite HD, but I think where this thing falls in the marketplace, it's just fine. Uh, it's got an interesting processor, an AMD A4 Micro 6400T quad core CPU. Uh, which also has Radeon graphics built in. And as you'll see in a minute, the 3D performance on this is actually very, very good. I was very surprised and impressed by how well it is on this, on this device. Uh, it's got a 32 gigabyte eMMC solid state drive on board. I think they're gonna have a version that's also available with a 64 gigabyte drive. Uh, 32 gigs with a Windows installation doesn't give you a lot of extra space to play with. So, you know, a good portion of that drive is taken up by the Windows installation itself. So I put uh, the game Portal 2 on here and I've only got maybe two, two or three gigabytes left on it. So if you're a gamer, you may want to invest in some external hard drives to make everything work better. It does have two gigabytes of onboard RAM, which is not upgradable. So it's pretty much soldered onto the motherboard. So uh, you'll want to keep, it, keep that in mind as you go. Uh, it does also have, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, Beats Audio on board. This is uh, something that is showing up on all of HP's consumer products lately. Won't be there for much longer because Apple bought Beats, but in the interim it is there. Uh, this has four speakers on board. I'm not sure exactly where they put them. They're probably all in this little speaker grill on the top here. And it sounds okay. It is rather loud uh, because you do have four speakers, um, but the sound isn't all that bassy. I'll just play a little music file here and you can kind of hear how loud it gets. Um, so it can definitely carry quite, quite well. Um, but the sound is, you know, just on the tinny side. It's kind of what you'd expect out of a, out of a low-end PC. You know, the sound's not going to be deep and bass or have a lot of range to it, but it's certainly clear enough. And if you want to have some music playing in the background or something, it'll work. But I think, of course, you'll do better with external speakers on board. Uh, it does have the Beats uh, equalizer and some of the other stuff in there as well. But I have not really found any value to the Beats thing being in these PCs. And if anything, they could have made them a little less expensive if they didn't include it. But I think it has some, has some brand value, so that's probably why they included it. Now, it does have a nice full-size keyboard. It's very comfortable to type on. The build quality overall feels really nice and solid. But my only complaint is the trackpad. It's not very good. It feels a lot like the cheap commoditized trackpads we have seen on other low-end Windows PCs, which is surprising because HP has put better trackpads in their Chromebooks. So I don't know why we're getting uh, this lousy one here, but that's it. It's rather squishy. It doesn't really feel like it's fitting all that well into the case here either. And the gestures are driving me crazy because if, even if my finger is even on the left-hand side of the uh, trackpad, when I start moving my finger over to move the mouse cursor around, it's actually switching screens on me as opposed to actually doing what I want it to do. And that has been a bit of an annoyance. So, uh, so that's the, uh, the overall hardware. There's also a couple of ports to take a look at. We've got HDMI on here, so you can plug it into an external display. Uh, you've got a USB 3.0 port here a uh, headphone and microphone jack here. So if you have a headset, you can plug that in there. A micro SD card slot, so you could put in a memory card to maybe offload some storage on there. And then you've got uh, two USB 2.0 ports on here as well. Uh, just on the subject of storage also, they give you 100 gigabytes of uh, Microsoft Cloud Drive. I think they call, I forgot what they call it now, but the Microsoft Cloud Drive service, you get like two years and 100 gigabytes of external storage that you can use through their cloud. So if you start running out of space, you can start offloading things uh, into Microsoft service there. So um, it's got about a f anywhere from like five to six hours of battery life, according to HP. And I haven't uh, really run the battery down just yet, but I have been using it off and on throughout the day here. And it's been uh, keeping its charge quite well, doing you know the kinds of tasks you would do with a computer at this price point. Gaming obviously will, will drain the battery a lot faster, but web browsing, word processing, and some of the basic light computing tasks uh, seem to hold up pretty well. And I think you'll get battery life commiserate with what they are claiming it will get. So let's take a look though at some benchmarking so you can get a feel as to how this computer runs and operates. Now I do like the way the stream feels. It's got a nice zippy feel to it, which I didn't see on a lot of these low end Chromebooks and Windows machines. It doesn't feel all that sluggish when you're moving around different windows and everything. Uh, it really feels nice. And I was thinking that might be due to the GPU that they've put on board the system here to kind of maybe speed up some graphical processes. So I ran the 3D Mark benchmark. This is the same benchmark test I've been running on all of the devices I've been testing lately, because a lot of the ones we've been using have been tablets and other low-end PCs. And it scored quite nicely, actually. 20,368 on that test. 
uh, which is much higher than uh, this Asus uh, T100 tablet that I liked from last year, a lot higher than the iPhone is at the moment, even the iPhone 6. Um, it doesn't quite best the NVIDIA Shield tablet, which is running that uh, K1 processor, which is a really great gaming processor, but uh, 20,000 on that test is pretty darn good, and I think this is a, a very solid 3D performer. So let's take a look at uh, Portal 2, though, which is a game, so you can actually see how it functions with a fairly up-to-date game. So here we are running Portal 2 on the stream PC, and it actually is functioning quite nicely. I was surprised by how well uh, this game does run on there. I even turned on the highest anti-aliasing settings. Uh, this is running at the device's native resolution of 1366 by 768. It looks really nice. The frame rate is playable. It's actually, a, a, you know, at least for this game, a pretty decent uh, gaming device. And I think if you're running, you know, some of the lower end games, you know, some older ones like this one, like Portal 2, and other ones that go back even further, I think you're going to have a nice experience. The only problem, of course, is that with only 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, you're going to see a limit to how much you can actually store on the computer directly. But I think the fact that you can run Portal 2 on here is pretty impressive. Now, what's interesting is that on the web browsing side of the spectrum, it's not as high performing. In fact, it scores on the low end of the scale as compared to many of the other low-end Chromebooks and PCs we've had in the studio over the last couple of weeks. I run the Octane Benchmark Test, which is a JavaScript performance test from Google, and I run it on all the machines that we ran on. And the HP Stream PC scored 6,627. That's an average across 10 tests. And when we look at where it falls on the spectrum against all these other machines we've looked at over the last couple of weeks, it's pretty low. It's below the Asus C200, the Acer K1 Chromebook, uh, the Lenovo G50-30, which is another low-end Windows PC. So you can see that it really isn't all that great of a performer when you're doing uh, web browsing. And if I go and uh, pop into like CNN as an example, you'll see that it's not as zippy as it might feel when we're popping around in different Windows uh, uh, applications. So, um, you know, it's, it's okay. It's certainly not bad, but it really feels about what these Chromebooks feel like. And I think if they had the, the ability to put in a faster processor, uh, they should have really tuned it for web browsing, which is what a lot of people are going to do. But that said, it doesn't feel all that much slower than those devices do. In fact, it feels just as sluggish as some of those other low-end Chromebooks do as well. And maybe that was what they were aiming for. And one other gripe is that just like other Windows computers, this thing comes loaded up with a bunch of stuff that you probably don't want. So I took off the McAfee antivirus already. Uh, it's got a bunch of HP resonance stuff that, that kind of just runs on the computer here. So you've got all the support assistant junk here. Uh, you've got their own connection to the Microsoft OneDrive system. So you have to kind of go through HP to get that credit, I guess. I don't know what that's all about. And there's a bunch of paid um, shortcuts on here too. Dropbox offer, there's an uh, Amazon affiliate link. And as you can see, the thing is going nuts with the gestures again. So there's a couple of annoyances that you just have to kind of uninstall and get going when you, get, when you first get the machine in-house. And I really would prefer that my manufacturers would give us the option. And I think there might be a way you can buy it direct from Microsoft to get the true experience. But I would just like for once to buy a Windows PC and not have all this junk that I got to take off uh, the minute I get it home. So that was one little gripe there. But beyond that, this is a nice little PC. I don't like the trackpad. I wish the trackpad was a little bit better. Uh, the 3D performance was really surprising to me. And, and what's interesting too is just how well it performed on the 3D side and how poorly it performed on some of those web browsing tests. So clearly this is a CPU that's kind of geared towards uh, making that Windows experience feel snappy, but it may not do too well in some other areas. Uh, one other thing to think about when you're looking at one of these low-end Microsoft Windows PCs versus a Chromebook is that uh, unlike the Chromebook where you get all of you know, Google's applications for free, uh, you're going to have to buy a subscription to use Office on this. Of course, you could use the Google suite for free um, using your web browser on here, but if you want to use Office, you've got to buy the subscription to Office 365. And I think that's going to be you know, one area where Microsoft's at a slight disadvantage in that they are getting into the low end of the market, but Google gives you a computer that runs all of its applications out of the box without an additional subscription, whereas on the Microsoft side, you're going to have to subscribe to Office 365 to actually get uh, their apps that you might want to buy this computer for. So uh, just keep that in mind. But beyond that, it's a really nice PC. I'm very excited to see uh, these low-end Windows PCs now coming on the market and also excited to see just how well they run. We're really seeing some uh, excellent value here at the low end of the market, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.